Here are the films that directly inspired all of my films and what made me want to be a director. I'm not wasting any time, so let's go. I'm sorry for the panic attack if you've seen the film. Gaspar Noé is known for many things. Harsh violence, nihilism, stunning visuals. But I associate him mostly with independence. This was his second feature, and the production history of the film is, uh, is very interesting, because it was made mostly by accident. He was trying to fund another film with Vincent Cassel and Monica Bellucci, but they weren't comfortable with the film he was ready to make, which eventually became Love, made in 2015. He pitched the idea of Irreversible and started shooting almost immediately, with just a three-page script mostly made out of outlines for each scene. All improvised, might I add, which is insane. Which this film is, in a nutshell, insane. All the scenes are in one continuous shot, and because of the reverse chronological order, the scenes are stitched together as if it was still in the wonder, which becomes really confusing at first. I found out about this film in 2011 when reading through a list of most disturbing films of all time. The poster was enough to get me intrigued. You're left feeling numb after the first viewing and, in my case, wanting to know more about it. The behind the scenes are almost more interesting than the film itself. I highly recommend if you want to destroy your senses for a little bit. This is the first uh, Icelandic film for me that made dialogue in Icelandic sound realistic. If you don't know, written dialogue in Icelandic media sounds more like literature, more theatrical. It shattered the perception I had previously. It sounded like actual teenagers were having conversations, which was baffling to me. This is what I strive towards when making movies. Planted the idea of making my first feature, which I made about 10 years later after seeing the film. The acting is so good and it sounds almost improvised. And to be clear, improvised doesn't necessarily mean good acting. It did nothing but support the story and the action. Great all around film. Here's one I bet you didn't know about. I've been chasing moments, trying to make sense of it all. Exit 117 is the directorial debut of Kevin McMullen, the guy who would later make Low Tide for A24. Most people get the idea to make a no-budget film from watching uh, maybe Slacker, Following, or even The Blair Witch Project. This is the film for me that made me think it was possible. It follows these kids who just graduated high school and sort of roam around trying to decide what to do for the rest of their life. Whether to go to college, out of state, in their hometown or at all. These moments that were captured were so real and raw. It's a film I connect with more and more on a deep level each time I watch it. It's purely a no-budget movie with a budget of around $850. The acting is great and the editing is a bit clumsy and easily forgiven. You can't really watch it anywhere. <coughs> Highly recommend it if you just want a comfortable watch with great acting. Another Gaspar Noé film. This film I think made everyone think of new ways to use the camera, where it was possible to put it and make camera movements that were otherwise unthinkable because holy shit. The camera literally goes into the ceiling and through the walls multiple times in the same shot. I try to emulate this style very unsuccessfully in a short film I made where we start with a POV of a person dying. Then the spirit follows his murderers around trying to cover their tracks. The opening credits are legendary and the POV shots in the beginning are enough to get you hooked. The main character gets killed and you're looking through his eyes or his spirit's eyes, while he's tripping on mushrooms. This is a crazy experience and goes beyond just watching a movie. It's the only movie I can think of which makes you high, in my opinion. It was a passion project for Gaspar and, and the script was longer than any he had written at almost 100 pages, which is mostly descriptions of the visuals, I believe. Again, every line was improvised. In an interview, Gaspar Noé described his process when making something like this. He thinks of how the last scene ended and the next one starts, and how to transition between. That's all you really need to make it make sense. It's a cult phenomenon that is studied in film schools across the world. It's really a masterpiece in its own right.
with a budget of around a million dollars, it looks like it costed 10 or 100 times more. The director, Mike Cahill, Mike Cahill? Cahill? Described his process like this. Spend the money sparingly if you can, then spend most of it on one money shot. The one that tricks the audience into thinking it costed a lot more. Michael Pitt is such an underrated actor and I love his performance. Such an original story and really, really makes you think about science, meaning of life, and if everyone's connected in some way. Just a great sci-fi film and a must watch. I've never felt so empty and sad when watching a romantic drama like this, like I did with this one. It's almost all improvised, and not because of time restrictions or anything like that. The writer-director, Derek C. in France, storyboarded the entire film meticulously and wrote 66 drafts for this film before realizing the story needs to feel as realistic as possible. So he threw it all out, not literally, but he knew the material so well, he could just go beyond that and create moments of spontaneity. Really appropriate for this movie, and I love it each time I watch it. He later used the same tactics when making one of my favorite movies, The Place Beyond the Pines, which may honestly be the best movie ever made, but what do I know? If you hadn't noticed, Gaspar Noe's films had the most impact on me, but it's the last Gaspar Noe film, I swear. This one is tough to talk about. It really depends who watches this movie. If you've been in a relationship before, this might be a good movie to see at least once. For me, it was a mirror reflection of how possessive I was when dating someone. How lonely one can be while still in a relationship and how irresponsible you can be with someone. It gave me a feeling I wanted to emulate in some way in my feature film. Again, it was improvised. It wasn't the best acting ever, but I felt it didn't matter. The visuals were just out of this world. This movie showed me that this subject matter should be put more on screen. People may not like it, but it's necessary to see. This really fucked me up, and it has one of the most beautiful closing scenes ever put on screen. And this was shown in 3D, which is probably some sort of joke made by Gaspar, when the borderline porn scenes were shown. Just don't watch it with friends, or god forbid, family members. But on to the last one. never seen anything like this movie, and it's just a damn good one. The budget was around 8 million, and was one of the last great low-budget indie films I can remember. I love how it lingers in some moments without cutting, which makes the scene more effective. It's a coming-of-age movie about high school kids, and it's so original. My thoughts when watching it include, wow, that's a strange moment for a visual effect. Why is the scene done in a wonder, and why is it perfect? It sort of shows how to bend a genre and expectations so it becomes just something awesome. It's a fun watch. Here are some honorable mentions and what I learned from each. Thank you for watching and subscribe.